the first thing about an invasion angle is if the United States was invaded by fucking Swaziland or, you know, Bogota, Colombia, the, the fucking Bogota National Guard, is that, a, is that, are, are we shaken? No, if, I mean, if somebody's got nuclear weapons, they're going to hit the fucking button. We're thinking, oh, shit, we got to hit them first. That's an invasion. What, what would happen if H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds, the Martians land, the fucking spaceship opens, and out pops Marvin the Martian with his cosmic ray gun? Get your, get your invaders over. Mm -hmm. They won't let, they think Vince wants to hear, and secretly, deep down, he does. Nobody is as big as the WWF, the WWF stars, so we can't let these guys look like they're competitive, or we can't let these guys beat WWF guys, or we can't do blah, blah, blah. And it just feeds on itself. And having the whole McMahon family thing, the whole reason why this would work, the whole reason why that Hall and Nash and the NWO invading WCW actually is the only angle they ever did in the 13 years they owned the company that actually really did kick Vince's mm -hmm. ass is because people really believe, my God, here's fucking Razor and Diesel, and they showed up, and they're going to fuck with the WCW guys. We believe this. That's why that worked. Mm. And he wasn't bright enough to see that. Five years later, he gets the same thing handed to him double, because now he owns everything. He could use anything, any name, whatever. They blow it all off, and nobody's there telling him, Vince, what the fuck are you doing? They were probably telling him the reverse. Well, I don't want those NWA guys, you know, if, uh, nobody believes that fucking shit. You know, those guys, now uh, WWF stars, we know them all over the world. Hell, it, 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 the McMahons owning everything, did more McMahon family, blah, blah. It should be a crime punishable by three to five years in the state penitentiary to let Shane or Stephanie on television just because everybody knows that it's like George Goulas with money. Everybody knows Daddy said sell. Everybody knows the only reason they're on television is because they're Vince's kids, because they didn't do it on their own merits. I like Shane. Not too sure about Stephanie, the way she's run through fucking talent over the last 10 years, running people crazy and driving them out of the business. But the point is, once that Shane owned one and Stephanie owned one and Vince had bought one, but now his family and there's Linda out there, you know, I, what the fuck? It's WCW versus the WWF. We've been waiting for this for 20 fucking years. And this is what you give us? He hurt the fans' feelings. Mm -hmm. And if you noticed, <laughs> just like w WCW business dropped off at uh, what, the end of 99, was it? And then they lost 60 million in, yeah, in 2000, yeah. and then they were they were done? Down by, yeah, 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 early 2001. Middle of 2001, WWF business dropped. They made the bonehead mistake of turning Steve Austin heel. Yeah, everybody wants to boo their fucking hero. And, 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 and they botched that, and business dropped. And what was it, a year, year and a half before it started? percolating mm. back up again. I mean, they were still making money. Nobody's throwing any benefits for them. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know. Why do you think that the biggest name talent uh, wasn't brought aboard initially? Shouldn't that first <laughs> surge, when you do that invasion angle, and, <clears throat> and you, that first surge, shouldn't you hit hard Sure. First? Well, it was money. See, WCW was losing more money than everybody realizes yeah. because I, I'm not going to say all these people because I don't know, but... When you had Flair and, and Goldberg and Sting and Nash, all the top guys, <laughs> most of them were not being paid by WCW. They were being paid by Turner Broadcasting. When WCW was sold, folded up, caught on fire, turned blue, dropped dead, whatever, it didn't matter to them. Turner Broadcasting still had to pay yeah, these people. So if Goldberg is going to make a half million dollars or what, I'm sorry if I'm shorting you, Goldberg, but um, whatever you know, large amount of money, to sit at home and do nothing for a year, year and a half, why is he even going to take the same amount of money to go on a road and get beat up every weekend? Mm. He's not. But the thing is, it was penny wise and pound foolish. If you're going to buy this thing and just fold it up, get rid of it, get rid of your competition, fine, just do that. Don't take anybody. Because look what he ended up with. We'll talk about these names in a minute, but my God. You know, these guys, they were on 90-day outs. Every 90 days, he could say, go away, don't do this anymore. Didn't have to pay anybody anything. It was 75 grand a year, maybe 50 grand a year minimums. So he just, you know, went to the dollar store and bought him a bunch of wrestlers. Most of them he didn't even want. He just figured, well, I bought the company, put them out of business. I don't want all these guys to be unemployed. These other guys are making all this money. They can afford to be. If he wanted to do the biggest angle of all time or if his creative team wanted to do the biggest angle of all time, they should have said, okay, 
We bought WCW for what somebody said two million, somebody said four million. I didn't write the check, don't know for sure, but ridiculous fire sale price. Let's put it, we just spent $30 million on a fucking restaurant in Times Square for fuck's sake. We spent $20 million trying to sell people bodybuilding pay per views. You know, we got three gay guys down to Castro in San Francisco and a couple of fucking steroid manufacturers to watch a bodybuilding pay per view. We spent all this money on all these, the XFL, need I say more. They won't spend $5 million to buy the fucking top talent and do the biggest angle of all time, give them an easy schedule, work with them a little bit. Please. Anyway. What do you think about the decision uh, smashing the companies together instead of trying to operate two separate companies? Well, well, with what they got, they had to smash it together. But, of course, that wasn't going to work, and they should have known from the beginning, but there was nothing to fucking... There was nothing to sell, really. Well, you got the final uh, the final Nitro, which is March 26th, okay? The date that will live in infamy. In in scrutiny, because they wait until May... In scrutiny? I, I, spent, I spent a week there one time, in scrutiny. It's, it's nice. Really nice. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you got to go on the off-season, though. Yeah. Um, May 28th is when they start the invasion angle. That's two months. Well, yeah, because they, they hadn't figured out what the fuck they were going to do That's what it was, yet. I guess. Yeah, they, they, didn't, two they didn't know. They didn't know. Yeah, and if they needed two months to plan that, I could have planned that on a good shit after a dinner at Taco Bell. But not only that, you, you've known for how long that you're going to buy the company. Shouldn't you start to? I, I don't forward? really know that they knew all that long they were going to buy the company. They just kind of ended up with it. But still, you know, fuck, you sent me this shit on Monday, hits Friday, and I've got something better than they had. Kevin was hired as a booker. Yeah. His wife, Miss Nancy, had been having an affair with Benoit right. the whole time they were on the road together. That's an ultimate sin in the wrestling business. And it's an ultimate sin in life for your wife to date your buddy or somebody you're working with. But it happens all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Benoit took Kevin's condo on Daytona Beach. He took Kevin's wife. He did a lot of stuff. Kevin never... Kevin's a badass. Kevin would have kicked Benoit's ass easily, or he'd have stabbed him in the eye with a fork, or he, he did something. Nancy couldn't let it go. Every day she was telling Chris, he's going to get you. Watch him. He's going to get you. you. So years go by. Hi, Kevin told me. He said he took my wife. He took my condo in Daytona. You know, when he got the job back booking, he said, I'm not going to do anything to him because I don't want to lose my job. Kevin put the world title on that dipshit. Had him beat, god dang, uh, Sid Vicious. And I begged him. I said, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. It's foolish. Benoit is not a world champion. Don't do this. He's great on the card. Like I said, in the Ringling Brothers Circus, he's a high wire rat. He's, but he's not the lion tamer. He sticks his head in the lion's mouth. It's going to get bit off. And that's what happened. We were in, Kevin got the booking job. We were in, I want to say, Cincinnati or something. Benoit beats Sid Vicious for the world's title. We go to uh, Cleveland or something the next day. J.J. Dillon comes walking in. No, not J.J., but they had given the uh, the accountant. Nice guy. Bob, uh, Bo Bob Duke? Not Bob not, not Bob Duke. Uh, Bill Bush. Bill Bush. Right. Bill Bush. They'd get, they'd made Bill Bush the boss. Uh, some TV guys and whatever got this big push to get rid of Eric Bischoff because... Eric had been flailing and, and whatever. So they fire Eric Bischoff and put Bill Bush in as the boss. So Kevin puts the world championship, world title on Benoit. Bill Bush comes in the dressing room with Kevin and I and he said, guys, he said, I, he said, I, I, I know what I'm going to do, but I just want to tell you. He said, Benoit, Guerrero, uh, Perry Saturn, the blonde haired guy that was a skateboard guy for a while, the, Looked kind of good, but never drew a dime. I don't know. He Shane, Shane Douglas. Shane Douglas uh, and somebody else said, they're all going to leave if, if I don't fire Kevin and you and J.J. Dillon. I said, what? said, quote, unquote, Benoit said he can't trust his career in Kevin's hands. I said, Kevin, against everybody, put the world's title on him last night. 
and he said, well, I'm, I'm going to let him go, but I just want you to know the ultimatum that they just gave me. I said, really? So I walked out of the dressing room. I found Benoit. I took and sat his ass down in the middle of the arena where nobody was around. I said, let me tell you something, worthless. I won't use the language I did. Say. But I said, Kevin Sullivan is your biggest pusher. I said, I said not to put the world title on you. J.J. Dillon said not to put the world title on you. But Kevin is your biggest pusher. He did that on his own. I said, now here's the difference between Kevin and I. If you had taken my wife, I would kick your ass every time I saw you for the rest of your life. That's what I'd do. But I said, now, now that you've tried to take my job because I'm Kevin's friend and you want to fire me, I said, I'll cut your fucking head off and put it on a stick in front of your house for all the kids to throw rocks at it. I said, I'm not the guy to mess with. He got up and I said, come on, let's roll. Tough guy, you know, let's go. And I was 50 at something at the time, I don't know, and he ran off through the building, oh my God, oh my God, about an hour later, here comes JJ. He walks in, he said, Mike, what did you do? I said, I didn't do anything. He said, the lady at Human Resources just called me and said that, that Benoit called her and that, that, that Mike Graham in the upper office had threatened his life. And I said, JJ, you've known me a long time. Would I do that? He said, oh, yeah. I said, no, 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 wrong answer. I said, let me call the lady. She said, don't. I said, let me call her. So I call her. Hi, how are you? It's Mike Graham. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just had a... Uh, she wouldn't tell she, like we don't know. Well, I just had a complaint from a wrestler that said you threatened his life. I said, here's the way it is. This is a very violent sport we live in. We're not we're not selling candy bars and crap like that out here. You know, I said, I've grown up. I said, all I told Chris was that if he had taken my wife and totally embarrassed me in front of my friends, my comrades, my everything, that I'd whip his ass every time I saw him. Now, can you blame a, a high-strung professional athlete for just making a comment like that to another high-strung? I said, that's the way we don't go dancing. We don't go, we're, we're kind of like dogs that nip at each other. And she said, that's what you said to him? I said, yeah, I told him I'd whip his ass every time I saw him had he done that to me. Where he didn't, Kevin didn't do nothing, you know? And he said, oh, well, yeah, I can understand that. So then when... When he didn't get her to do anything to me, and when Bill Bush wasn't going to fire Kevin, then that's when I called him the little band of midgets. Little band of midgets ran to New York, and I said, I just saved our company two and a half million dollars a year because they never drew a dime. Not a dime. Not a dime. I did the TVs. I had the TV people give me a minute to minute rating of all of our shows. I knew when people stopped watching, who they were watching, when they were tuning in, those guys never drew a dime. All right, number one, you have to have a structure where the uh, where the rest is motivated. And when you give a guy a million dollars a year and he doesn't have to perform for it, he doesn't have to meet any goals or any standards, mm. he just has to be superstar Jim, then you're not going to get it. Right. And he's certainly not going to listen to some dumb booker that's making 300000 Right. Um, so, in order for us to play this game, you have to assume that the booker has some authority mm -hmm. because it's just, you know, it's nobody will be a factor in making a difference. Right. And that's why I never took the job because, you know, I couldn't do the things that had to be done. Right. You knew you weren't going to have the power. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've heard all kinds of stories with Bill Watts, but the, no, the thing that I do know is Bill knew that he couldn't function in that environment. Mm -hmm. When he was a success with his own territory, until he, you know, 
tried to reach too far with all the televisions. But as far as promoting the wrestling business, he was he knew his stuff. Yeah. And you wouldn't be able to tell Bill that he wasn't allowed to be a general, would you? No. <laughs> but anyway, he uh, he failed because of the system they had. But if we now assume that I can control the talent mm -hmm. and uh, who they are, then my philosophy is very, very simple. Mm -hmm. I think that most bookers, most writers, try to be too cute and too complex and, and they forget that what the wrestling business is, is an hour of entertainment on television, or two hours. And the fan gets in his car and he drives down and he pays a pretty good price. He has to pay for parking, tickets, mm -hmm. concession. And he goes in, he's looking to be entertained. He's not looking to be outsmarted. He's not looking to, to do anything except Entertain. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the wrestling fans want to be able to vent in their entertainment. Scream, cuss, holler, act a fool, mm -hmm. you know. But the main, the main principle of the business is to be entertained. The, you have to remember that first. The second thing you have to remember is that uh, the fan has to be able to do the, exactly the same thing that a fan in a great action movie does, and that is suspend disbelief. He, the Rocky II movie, Rocky's fighting Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed is bigger and stronger and beats him up most of the fight. And then Rocky makes a big comeback and, uh, and wins the fight. And uh, everybody in the theater, including me, jumped up, yay! You know, I was, I was really emotional because I had really bought, in, bought into it. Mm -hmm. Now, did any of us think that was a real fight? No. We knew that it was theater, but we bought into it emotionally. Yes. Now, it was very simple, right? Beat him up, make a comeback. Punch them out, win. Mm -hmm. They did the storyline to build the emotion up all through the movie. You build the emotion up through several weeks of television. Show that this guy is a real mean guy and though this guy is a sweet, good-hearted, mm -hmm. honest fellow. Mm -hmm. And you put them together and there's a win. Now let's take the Rocky movie and, and let most of the bookers in the business, produce and direct. Apollo Creed beats the heck out of Rocky. Rocky starts his comeback. Apollo Creed's manager jumps up on the apron and the referee comes over to him, to him and they're arguing. And uh, Apollo Creed's second then jumps in with the Stool water can or the, can. Or the stew or and cracks him over the head yeah. and scoots out and the referee turns around and Rocky's laid out and he counts to ten, holds up Apollo Creed. You think anybody in that theater is going to do anything except say, boo, you suck. <laughs>